Money with Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? Got a couple phone lines open if you want to jump in today. 339-1140. 1-800-920-1140. Or you can text me at 44-1140. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Just our reply. We did get uh, Henry who uh, opted to take the uh, pair of passes to Sierra at Tahoe. And, uh, it is supposed to snow this week. Isn't yeah, it? they're calling for. Well, they, they got a, they got some snow last week. I'm actually probably going to head up a little bit tomorrow and get a few runs in. But then Tuesday and Wednesday they're calling for some snow. Uh, my passes that I'm giving out are good Sunday through Friday. So Saturday's the only day, but a good good midweek ski in there. And you got to check out Sierra Tahoe. I mean, I know all the resorts are just you know having a very difficult year, and as as everybody is who's related to that industry. But uh, I believe they're opening up their backcountry cat tours here pretty quick, which would be pr- pretty cool. And uh, you get a little backcountry skiing if you want to do that as well. they got all kinds of things going on at Sierra Tahoe. So check them out. You can check out their website, sierratahoe.com, if you want to see what's going on. So, But we did get a winner. His name was Henry. But I don't recall if I know the question again. Well, the question was, there's three different products here. Tortilla chips, pretzels, and chicken wings. And the question was, is, what uh, what, what are more people going to eat? What's the in volume there? In volume, in terms of weight. If you mm. just looked at the weight of the G- products. Give me a hint. Tummy likey. Tummy want wingy. <laughs> so Chris so, Farley chose, chose the wings. He what, what did. Was yeah, yeah, the answer was uh, chicken wings. My mom got that right also. We got a little text from her. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see here. If you were a pretzel eater, you'd be eating about 13.2 million pounds of pretzels. That's going to leave a stomach ache. Uh, 45.8 million pounds of potato chips. 43.2 million pounds of tortilla chips. And all us skinny guys are going to eat 100 million pounds of chicken wings. Tell me likey. Tell me want bingy. <laughs> so anyway, chicken wings are the answer. We are fairly too easily amused. So and if, you happen, if you're like me and you have to end up with chicken wing sauce on your white shirt, which always happens to me, check this out. A um, Chinese scientists have created a chemical additive for cotton that degrades stains and kills bacteria when exposed to light, opening the door to self-cleaning clothes. Yes. So you can walk out there. The titanium dioxide has been known to attack stains and can be affixed to cotton, but activation requires light from the ultraviolet spectrum. Now we're getting into the geek speak now. <laughs> I'm guessing that means the sun ray. Making the material impractical. Oh, making the material impractical. What are they talking about? When research has added nitrogen and silver iode to the mix, however, two hours and a thousand watt lamp was all it took to defeat a deep orange stain. Now I'm confused as hell. So do I got to walk around with a 2,000 watt lamp on my on my forehead, or does the sun going to work? But you anyway, they're coming. The neon neon sign on your chest. They're coming out with a. Uh, I mean, a self cleaning shirt would be fantastic if they could self press it. And what, what you got? Anything else you want, no, me, you want me to jump it. into it? There, I'm done. Okay. Tummy <laughs> likey. Tummy want wingy. This show is a total cluster today. I can tell you right now. Don't bother calling. You're just going to interrupt a good time. <laughs> Don't interrupt us. Chris, go ahead and crack that beer. Let's make, get the Alaskan Amber in there. Let's just get it going. You know, we have to do... I don't know how it works into a financial show, but somehow we have to do one this of those... This is drink- not a financial show. This is a show about nothing. <laughs> this is like Seinfeld on the radio, but not funny. We have to figure out to do one of those uh, drinking commercial or shows. You know, where, you, where we you have a shot get every 10 and, minutes. And, and see the- if it affects your... Nobody will know if we're actually drunk or sober because they will we, our, our I low- thought we played that game every show. Yes. <laughs> It worked last Saturday from 8 to 9. I've been doing the OxyContin show for four years. I don't know what you guys have been doing. (laughs) Anywho. Uh, uh, Hey, did you... uh, If we have to do this for two two hours, that's going to be two hours too damn long. That's for sure. We're having a good time. I hope you are too. Hey, um, so I got a few emails this week regarding the the President's State of the Union address where he mentioned he's going to seek refinancing aid for homeowners and what he was referring to is all of the people out there who've been kind of left out of the process so far. And I got a few calls and emails this week, I think even at the end of last week's show, asking, hey, don't you think that's great? And I, my comment was, you know, maybe. And, and by maybe, I mean this. It, for those who have been left out and are still current on their mortgages, which is a lot of people because they didn't have a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or an FHA loan, they're really frustrated because, you know, and I'm speaking to the choir here because a lot of them are listening to the show, but they've, they've bought, they didn't overbuy. 
They didn't do a stated income loan. They didn't do anything weird, and yet they haven't been able to refinance and take advantage of it. And, and, and to some, in some instances, that's just not fair. But here's the challenge with a political year statement by the administration saying, we, we, want, we want to bring those people in. That sounds great. Because that's a good political move, and then you don't. And then if the other party opposes you, that makes you look better, and makes them look worse. So it, it's kind of a no. But you have to go to Congress and get them to approve it. And here's why. And here, and, and I'll throw this out to you guys. And I'll maybe we'll just do this as a little text, text in yes or no. Should we do this at forty four eleven forty? We'll randomly pick somebody and send them to Sierra Tahoe, and we'll make you ski the backside, even if you're wedging it. Um, so here's what happens, Nick. Right now. You have a loan at uh, Big Giant Box Bank, you know, the Big Bank, one of them. It's a jumbo loan or whatever. For whatever reason, it's not Fannie Mae, it's not Freddie Mac, it's not FHA, okay? I'm the bank. So I'm the bank, and I'm on the hook for the Nick Perjanic loan. So do we want to take that loan and move it? And what they're talking about is moving it into the FHA program, okay? So... Do I want to take a loan that right now me, the, or you, the federal taxpayers, and you, the federal government, have no obligation to cover any losses to me, the bank, or to cover losses to Nick? You are not on the hook for anything. If Nick goes sour and I lose my money as a bank, that's too damn bad for me, and all the rest of you have nothing to do with it, okay? Now what we want to do is take Nick's loan and move it over to the FHA program, which is a federally insured, taxpayer-backed, program. Now, if Nick defaults, the taxpayer and FHA have to pick up the tab for that loan. Okay. Yes. Nick has to pay what's called mortgage insurance. He's going to pay a a premium uh, of mortgage insurance to help insure that loan. But that's a fairly small amount of money compared to the loss that we could have. And a lot of these loans are fairly good sized loans that are, you know, that we're talking about. So do we want to uh, collectively as a society take loans that we have no obligation for right now as taxpayers in the federal government and move them into our basket and take them on so that those people can refinance. That's, I mean, that's really the question. So 44-1140, or you can call me at 339-1140. Let me know your thoughts. Do we want to do that? If you're one of the people that have the loan, the answer is, oh, yeah, let's do that. Because rates on an FHA loan right now are in the high threes. Let's go compare that to where you are now. You're going to have mortgage insurance, PMI, and it's a, it's a fairly good amount, so it's going to equate to a, a little bit higher payment than the high threes would be. But do we as a group, is, is that a good idea or is it not? I and mean, you could argue both sides. I mean, it's, it, if it keeps people in their house and they don't default and they get lower payments and we work our way out of the problem, then it's, it was a home run. But if we get in, even a minor percentage of people that still default and now we're on the hook for it as a federal taxpayer – that becomes fairly ugly. So it's a tough question. So to put it out there on the State of the Union address sounds good, but is it really good if it happens? It's good for some people, but it may not be good for the collective group. So we'll throw that out there. Let me know your thoughts if you want to text me. And you can just text yes or no. Yes, we should move those people into the FHA program and help them refinance, or no, we should not, and we should leave it alone. And... Um, let me do it on time here. We got, I, I, saw, I saw this in this as another type of a response from the Fed that I don't quite understand. And this goes back to the Federal Reserve saying, you know, we're going to try to keep rates low to 2014, which is good. I mean, if they can do it. But the comment that followed it up it was, is right here. The Fed might do even more, such as add to its portfolio of mortgage-backed securities. Basically, what it means is it'll go buy more, buy more mortgages. If the economic outlook doesn't improve, so it can continue to push down rates. And my contention is this. We don't have a rate problem. Okay? Rates are, it's not a matter whether rates are 3%, 4%, or 5%. That is not the problem for activity. The problem is jobs and equity. The people who can't, we have serial refinancers right now who have gone from 6 to 5 to 4 to 3. That's fine. They're taking advantage of it. But they don't need any more help. They've gotten the roll down. We've got people who want to buy homes, and they'll buy homes whether rates are 3 4 or 5 or 6%. They can afford any of the above, but they're concerned about their jobs. And then we've got people that want to refinance, as previously mentioned, who don't have any equity at all, who could certainly benefit to refinance, but lowering rates isn't going to help them if they have no equity. 
So the statement that boy pushing rates down is going to will continue to spur something, you know, is part crap. I mean, get the uh, go back to our jobs number here. Get another two hundred fifty thousand jobs a quarter or a month or whatever. Get that continuing on. We won't have a rate problem. Rates could be eight or nine percent if everybody's con- concerned or convinced they have a good job and things are going well. They'll buy no matter what. I mean, go ask your parents if, if people bought rates when, when rates were 13, 14, and 18 percent. People bought houses. I mean, the, the, the world didn't come to a crash when rates were double digits as long as they knew they had a job. They maybe didn't buy as much of a house, but they bought houses. So it's not a rate problem we have. It's a in the head problem. I'm mean, worried about my job. I don't have a job or I can't refinance. So put that out there for you as well. We got a couple phone lines open and we got another quiz question as well. 339-1140, um, You have your choice. We got a pair of passes for Sierra at Tahoe if you'd like. We also have a pair of passes to the IMAX. And you got to check out this Tornado Alley it, 3D movie they have going on down there. It's pretty cool. Oh, is it? Yeah. You've seen those uh, kind of, I want to say they almost look like Humvees protected yeah. like a tank yeah. that they're going out there. It's a, it's a movie I, I think about... I, I think uh, I saw one of those just on a regular TV. That would have been cool on uh, that. This is cool. Oh, this yeah. is in 3D down at IMAX. So if you are not a winner and you still want to go down and check out the uh, IMAX, I invite you to do that. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you 25% off. This is my gift to you. I'm a giver. I'm like that. It's Christmas all year long here. So if you go to IMAX.com forward slash Sacramento, you can put in, in the discount code, put in my last name, Tarbell, T-A-R-B-E-L-L. You get 25% off all of your ticket purchases and your food items at the snack bar, even if you want 100 pounds of wings. I'm not sure if they sell wings down there, but if they do, you can get 25 pounds for free, I guess, because if you get 25 pounds off, 25% off. So check them out, imax.com forward slash Sacramento. Here's our quiz question. Which one I want to do? Let's go to this one here. You heard of this guy, Chris? His name is Mark Cuban. You heard of him? Uh, Once or twice. Yeah, okay. So Mark Cuban uh, probably, well, I don't know why. I guess he wants to raise some more cash. He didn't have enough. The Mavericks are doing okay, right? They're they're an okay team. But Mark Cuban is selling his stake in the cable channel HDNet. And the buyer is whom? Who is going to buy his stake in HDNet? 339-1140. 1-800-920-1140. I'll give you a little idle if you get the answer right. This is Talking Money. My name is Jeff Tarbell. On the text line at 441140, we got a little text quiz uh, going should we take those people who have been unable to refinance and move them into the FHA program, potentially lowering their rates and their payments, and potentially putting them, us on the hook as taxpayers for their loans? And we'll, uh, Atlas is shrugging. Oh, I know who that is. We'll be right back. <laughs> 